Hey guys, EST here with a little bit uh, different of a video, but I wanted to kind of have this be the launch for a couple digital and tech videos that I'm going to make on like, you know, like VPNs, how do they work, um, how to really use them correctly, you know, how good are they, are the free ones any good? What even is the point? What do they do? What do they not do? What are some alternatives? I'm going to make that video as soon as I got time. But for now, let's talk about, uh, from the tech sector especially, but really for, you know, big international corporations, uh, the giant crackdown on Russia. Look, you invade your neighbor and, oh no, bad things are happening to us and our people. Yeah, it's supposed to be a disincentive. I somewhat agree with what is going on, but there's a whatever the opposite of a silver lining is. So like today, Microsoft uh, halts all new sales in Russia of everything. So imagine trying to operate your business without Microsoft products. It's not that hard, but you can't just do it with no notice. And honestly, you can install Windows 7 or 10 and I think even 11 without a code at all and just run it in like demo mode forever and all you get is like a watermark. But I thought on the pro side, you can't join a domain, which means you pretty much can't network with other large corporate servers or anything. Yeah, mid to large size businesses, that's going to be a problem. You can buy licensed codes on on eBay, let alone the black market, but uh, they might be blocking the activation servers. And if you got to activate them, you got to get like a VPN running set. You can pretend to be from a different country. Yeah, a bit of a nightmare. And you could operate without, you know, Microsoft Office. Obviously, everybody should. LibreOffice is free and it's better. And it doesn't spy on you and filter your words. I know Google, the Google suite does that too. Yeah, no joke. They have like SJW approved terms, and if you type the wrong one, it'll it'll correct it for you. No thanks. So let's leave Microsoft land and a couple other computer vendors said we're not shipping there. So let's just say, okay, you're, you're operating with the computers you already have and you just run demo licenses and hack copies. Okay. All they're really doing is shooting themselves in the foot, grandstanding and saying, look how great we are. We finally banned Russia and then letting everybody just pirate everything, which in Russia is pretty much what they do anyway. So that's kind of nothing, but imagine like a, a steel processor or somebody, you know, anything that Russia imports that they don't make themselves, which is actually quite a bit for how big they are. They aren't using their land very well because their economy sucks. So let's say they can't get steel. They can't get, you know, really exotic stuff, even like, uh, you know, magnets and, uh, Unfortunately, I think 90% of the neon gas used in processors comes from uh, Russia, so that's going to be a really big issue. But really, they import more than they export when it comes to important stuff. And a lot of the other stuff they got is energy-related, or it's like really dumb stuff like diamonds and rare minerals and stuff nobody really needs. So besides oil and gas, like I said, they, they do not export that much, which means... They don't usually domestically make it either. So if everybody's saying we're just not going to deal business with you either by choice or by Stripe shutting them down, which is how you send large amounts of money between countries and convert currencies and all that. Well, then, I mean, you know how bad the COVID lockdowns were where people just couldn't go to work for a bit. But try like going to work and there's no work to do. Try your company shuts down overnight because they can't get any raw materials or all their computers switched off, you know, or they, they can't set up a new branch because they can't get, I don't know, networking cables or something. A lot of that comes from China. That's the problem is they're kind of allied with China. They can get oh, a lot of electronics and stuff from there. Not to mention steel, important neodymium and other earth magnets. Those come from China. So that kind of sucks. So will this be effective Somewhat. It'll it'll really, really disrupt certain things and certain businesses. Will it disrupt the military? I'd like to think no. I, I don't know if that was even the point. A lot of, like these like I said, these companies are just grandstanding, look, saying, look how great we are. We blocked Russia, whether it makes sense or not. And a lot of them, they have like one Russian customer and they come out on you know Twitter and they're like, we're blocking them. Ha <laughs> ha, look how great we are. Buy our products. It's a, a marketing slash what's usually called virtue signaling, where they're just like, saying or doing something that has almost no meaning just for their own reputation. That's pretty much my definition of it. So how practical, how effective will this be? I've heard already of people in Russia saying, this is disrupting my work. I don't support the government. Why are you taking it out on the citizens? And a lot of people have flipped on everyone blocking Russia saying, well, yeah, why are you taking it on the citizens? They didn't do this. Well, not entirely true, but um, a lot of other places are like, no, we've got a reserve of whatever. We make our own whatever. We're fine. We're still going to operate. Oh no, we've been banned from, from the that. European singing competition. Oh, what are we going to do now? Like a lot of this was just political, you know, showboating nonsense. Some of it was effective, but not enough. I think they have enough other sources from allies to get stuff like, you know, concrete and whatever else. You know, even like asphalt to build roads, um, any kind of copper to build like, you know, power lines and maintain your grid. All of that can come from China, unfortunately. So I don't think it'll go far enough, but it's more about sending a message and making life as hard as possible for bad regimes. And this does work. That's why I partially support this. I lean maybe 60, 70% towards supporting this. And we'll get to the very not silver lining in a second here. I mean, look at Cuba. 
they said, we're going communist and we're going to stage Russian missiles uh, right next to America because they're paying us. And then America and its allies and much other people were like, fine, we're just never going to trade from you. We're not going to buy anything from you. You're a stupid little island with barely any farmland and we're just not going to let you buy anything from us. And now... Oh boy. To say that there's been pressure on Cuba for the last couple decades would be an understatement. Their economy is in shambles. The communists, as they always do, have resorted to just hoarding stuff for themselves and the elites and giving nothing to the working class, which is literally the opposite of communism, but it's what always happens because humans can't be trusted. I don't know if you noticed, but communism doesn't make government corruption suddenly go away. Yeah, a hyper-powerful government that can micromanage your life doesn't make government corruption go away. I know. I'm shocked. It's it's almost like it's the environment that encourages it. And ever since it's like, oh, they can go to the, the store and buy, you know, tasty beans and like, that's it. Anything they want, they got to produce themselves. And that is a problem. Now, even if they want to trade with another, you know, socialist communist place, um, like even China, their um, entire economy has been so destroyed by not being able to trade internationally with any of the big players that nobody wants the currency and they don't overproduce enough to, to trade, like literally trade as an export to get money to import. So what would be preferable? Okay, Cuba, we don't like your behavior, um, but we, we don't want to put economic sanctions and limit business and start, you know, trying to clamp down and get you to change your actions from an economic standpoint. So our only other alternative is to invade, blow you all to hell, demolish all your government buildings and take over your country. Like, you know, 14th century style. We don't like you and you're a threat to us and we think we can take you over. So knock, knock, here we are. Yeah, countries aren't really allowed to do that anymore. That's a very old style of thinking. Um, not only is it very inconvenient for uh, international trade right now, but that's why people are kind of so mad at Russia because you don't just invade places. And it's literally because they want the resources and land is, is the going theory. Yeah, not allowed. Everybody stay in your own little playground. Come on. It's 2022. You can't just take over a country because you want it. So... I guess if you want to start with, you know, bad behavior punishment with not military intervention because it's expensive, it's dangerous, and it always ends up taking it on the civilians, well then, yeah, economic sanctions and limiting and, and blacklisting them and, you know, America has their list of people, the, the entities list or whatever that you're not allowed to do business with. And one of them back in the day was Kaspersky because they thought they got caught spying for the Russian government. So they at least talked about and I think briefly implemented, might even still be around, I don't remember, uh, a block on their software. And Kaspersky made a lot of money with their virus in uh, America. I mean, banning Huawei, you know, trash networking equipment, phones, all that from America. Yeah, they have been caught spying in the past and they continue to despite warnings. So you just block them and you do as much damage to the company as possible. I don't have a problem with this. So anybody saying, oh, well, you can't take it on the Russian people and the Russian businesses. Why are you blocking Russian people from YouTube? Yeah, I mean, YouTube is just entertainment. It's not important. It's annoying. It puts pressure on them. It, it says, hey, the world is scolding you for what you're doing, but people say, well, the, the civilians aren't the ones doing it. It's the military, and honestly, Russia is run by a bunch of rich oligarchs. You know, it's just millionaires, billionaires uh, running the country pretty much and telling the PM what to do and kind of warring with each other like it's, you know, Japan with, with the different uh, shoguns. But instead of samurai, they have bank accounts. So that's whose fault it really is, but like, let me ask you a question. Whose fault is it that corrupt politicians, corrupt policemen, and drug lords took over Mexico? Like, whose fault actually is it? You could say the last, like, clean, operating, correctly government, but it's really the people. And at a certain point, it's the people's parents and grandparents, which then, okay, it falls apart a little bit, but you saw crime, you saw drug dealers happening, you saw drugs becoming an issue in your neighborhood, and you did what? You moved, you moved to a different place, you ignored it, you joined them because money, you said, okay, I'm going to America where they don't tolerate this, oh well, good luck Mexico, and then, you know, fast forward a couple decades, oh yeah, that's right, I did nothing to fix it, and then nothing got fixed. Hey, I guess that's how that works. And look, uh, people don't want to hear it, and I hate to say it, but at the end of the day, if you've got something going on in your country, it is every last person's responsibility to fix it. No matter how ugly it is, how hard it is, how much it disrupts your daily life, your family, how dangerous it is for you, your kids, your relatives, how expensive it is, the amount of cost, it doesn't matter because if you ignore a problem, it doesn't go away, especially crime, because crime is motiv mo motivated by money, and so are you working your normal job trying to keep your country on the tracks you know who's gonna get their way people bribing people with guns people with you know money and influence or people who don't want that to happen but are doing absolutely nothing and don't have that and every day are getting you know i guess economically beat by the people ruining the country committing crimes and spreading corruption so should the german people have risen up against hitler 
Absolutely. In fact, two thirds of them didn't support Hitler. They had the numbers and the one third, if they would have heard the truth, would have gotten a clue. So they were mostly brainwashed by the media and almost nobody actually believed what Hitler believed. Was it their responsibility to get him out of office? Absolutely. 100% to fact check everything he was saying. Absolutely 100%. Now, no internet back then, okay, once you control the media and stuff back then, you'd get a couple newspapers and all of a sudden everybody just believes it. A little harder in the age of the internet, although look at half of America and what they believe. Look at anyone watching CNN and what they believe. But should the people have risen up against uh, the North Korean original dictators? Absolutely they should have. It doesn't matter how many people died or how much it cost, they should have. Because look where they are now. Is this better? You solve a small, ugly problem now before it becomes a big, ugly, unsolvable problem later. But then you get, you know, diffusion of responsibility. Well, I, I'm not going to do it because I like my job. I have an important business. I have a big family, and if something happened to me, oh, maybe the government will fix itself. Maybe they will listen to the people. Maybe it'll get better. Well, everything crumbles down around you, and then you're like, oh, I should have done something about it. Well, it's too late now. Oh, well. It's kind of like a rock in a hard place, but the hard place is way worse, so you got to pick the rock, no matter how much you don't want to. That has been my stance because it is the truth. So you've probably already connected the dots. How does that tie into Russia and the Russian people? Why are we punishing the Russian civilians and people? Because they let Putin still be in charge. They let the billionaires still be in charge. They kept buying things from them. They kept working for them. They kept not removing them from power one way or another. And I mean, there are all kinds of various ways. Probably not what you're thinking. That isn't a welcome statement for me to make on YouTube. That's the last resort. Just ruining their business, seizing their assets, or just driving them out with a with a campaign saying boycott these people. That'll remove them from their position just as quickly, okay? You need to take bad people in any government, any society, and say no, not acceptable. I mean, look at all the amount of people in America just boycotting Facebook. Going all the way back to, like, what the Americans said about the, the British just treating them like a piggy bank and taxing them on, you know, dumb stuff like tea and sugar and whatever else, and then giving them no representation and being like, oh, you guys, your economy keeps growing because you're a new place and your population's going up and your industry's going up. Cool, free money. Haha, <laughs> send it over. Just that, we were like, unacceptable. So they sent letters, they sent complaints, the king was like, who cares? And then we took our guns and kicked the living crap out of them. Yes, the war with France helped, who cares? Now see, monarchies and dictatorships are interesting because you don't need to take out their entire giant army that's all being centrally controlled by one person. You just need to take out the one person and that's how everything went in the medieval times all the assassinations poisonings you know <laughs> there's a reason they had food tasters because they realized if you just get rid of the one person antagonizing it and replace them with someone who's better then all of a sudden it's peaceful and everybody's back to normal now i mean like i said russia isn't just vladimir putin he's not the dictator he's just the head of the majority of the rich billionaires running the country all the oil execs all the natural gas people all the criminals all the all the hacking group leaders if putin suddenly choked on a salmon bone in his bunker and disappeared they just replace him with you know putin 2.0 the person doesn't even matter he's like a glorified really really good effective good at doing his job employee of the billionaires in russia okay they'll just hire some someone else but what do you do when the billionaires all start losing money because every single business in russia starts losing money they look at their their power slipping away and they're fully in control of who runs the country maybe they start putting pressure and say you know what we don't need ukraine because it's doing so much damage it's not worth it and honestly once a certain percentage of your people protest and just start blocking everything not driving semis blocking railroads blocking streets just not going into work everything screeches to a halt everybody's out of everything everybody's pissed you have to do something or i mean a mob of one million people it doesn't matter how big your military is and it's gonna look even worse if you start shooting no matter who you think you are with the exception of North Korea, because it's like, just what are the people going to do? They don't even have basic weapons or enough food to, like, you know, go anywhere or transportation. Don't let it get to that level, people. But once a certain amount of your people are pissed off, you have to listen to them. Or they will remove you or they will burn the, com the, the whole country to the ground. Metaphorically, sometimes literally, but it's their own property, so they really ought not to. So is it entirely a bad thing that all these international companies, based on history, examples, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and why... Because like I said, on this channel, we always get the full picture, always approach it from every angle, always see every side of everything. Is it good that Microsoft and Facebook and international banking companies, everything are cracking down on the Russian people and on people's daily lives and depriving them of all kinds of stuff, either conveniences or stuff they actually need to go to work and do their business, while also depriving their businesses of anyone to sell to or export to? 
absolutely it is a good thing because it's going to piss off the people to say, hey, you should have done something about your garbage government, but you're like, oh, not me. The next guy will take care of it. Oh, not me. The next guy will take care of it. For decades. Oh, I don't want to risk my life. Oh, I don't want to run for office. Oh, I don't want to start, you know, an, a, an underground activist organization that you know, ruins some corrupt billionaire's business. Oh, not me. I'm not going to be the one because that could be dangerous. Well, you know what's dangerous is your leader invading Ukraine. And now it's all coming back to roost right now. So uh, probably should have done something before when it was easier. So it's really about sending the Russian people a message that it's like, okay, if you're on our side and you don't like your government, well, here's your encouragement to do something about it. Get out there, protest, let them know that millions of people are not happy. You're not going to take it. And then the leaders of Russia are like, oh, our own people are against us. Most of the world is against us. All the world finance people are against us. Do you think the sanctions are going to end if they take over half of Ukraine and that'll be worth it? No, they're trying to make it not worth it. And you might say, but that's so mean. That's so mean to do to just individual business owners and people in Russia. They're all going to do awful and starve and have economic collapse. Who was responsible for fixing their government before it came to war? It was either them or their parents, okay? It hasn't been that long since the Soviet uh, collapse. So what's the alternative? Uh, let Russia do whatever they want, and then every aggressive country is like, oh, we can get away with anything because what are they going to do? They're not willing to stop us with military, and they're not willing to take it out on our poor people with economic sanctions. So yeah, I'm just going to take over this, take over that. You know, I bet we could take over this country. You know how many countries want Greenland and Iceland? You know how many want um, pretty much the whole North Pole and parts of Antarctica? So there are three options the way I see it. One, Old school medieval just take out the leader assassination, which even up to like, what, the 50s, 60s, 70s America tried with the CIA? It's great when it works. It usually doesn't. Pretty hard to keep stuff secret with all the surveillance and tracking and cameras and everything everywhere. Plus, everybody in the world kind of has a gentlemanly agreement. We don't assassinate each other's leaders because once a couple do it, they're like, well, I guess all bets are off and then just everybody's getting killed. So everybody knows that that's kind of like, it, it's like nuclear war. Well, if one person does it, we're all going to do it. So why don't we just not all start this you know dominoes going going over so that's out then we've got uh, all out war where it's like oh you're invading this okay well we don't like you we don't want you to invade them whether they're an ally or not we just don't want you to gain power because you're awful or they are our ally either way okay all out war and then everybody takes sides russia joins with china and belarus and then we get all of our nato people and then it's world war three nobody wants that if we didn't have nukes it would solve things we would just win the typical allies against the typical perpetual villains for the last hundred years, we would win. America's military and GDP and production could almost take out the entire rest of the world, okay? China's is just fake and lied about and their entire military is corrupt. In Russia, they don't have the GDP to do anything. So without nukes, oh, we could have gotten rid of every world villain all at once in one war. With nukes, nobody wins, because if you think they're just going to roll over and, and not resort to that, um, no, and that's what complicates things. But it also stops everybody from just going to war just because. You know, the mutually assured destruction, mad, where, where with, in nukes nobody wins. But then look at Russia, they're like, well, then we're invading Ukraine because nobody wants to use nukes. And that's why it's getting really, really complicated. So a country goes way out of line, assassinations are out, all-out war is out for various reasons. What's the third one? Absolute economic destruction. Now you've probably heard ever since like the 90s, I've been hearing this even through school. There's not going to be a World War III because it's there's so much international trade, so many companies that individually are worth more money than some countries. International trade, how electronics and computers are made, okay? Everybody wants computers. Nobody wants to blow up the place that has, you know, the magnets or the copper or the whatever that makes computers. Or the chip-making factories, which are almost all in Taiwan. Look, you just, you, you take out China, no, no more magnets, no more LCD monitors, no more uh, GPS. I mean, just look up everything that high-end magnets are in. Take out Russia. Oh, there goes the entire uh, supply of neon. Oops, we kind of needed that. Not for neon signs, but for neon is used in the production of CPUs. You take out America, no more helium for the world. Yeah, a, a lot of these places, you know, the corporations went nuts and just bought all their international, you know, every mine, every whatever. And now it's like, oh, 90, 95% of the supply of whatever come from this one company and this one place. And now look at the consequences you know, of, of that. Plus, if you you know, totally, utterly, militarily destroy another country. That's just one less customer for all of your biggest businesses because all of your business, biggest businesses, and this goes even more significantly for smaller countries, all of your biggest businesses in your country have just lost a customer. You lost X amount of your, your raw ingredients that you need to make whatever, and then you, you also eliminated X amount of your customers. So instead of going to war and just causing it, why not just economically cause it? Because it, it's easier... 
because of international trade being more important than international borders in countries right now, and war being so utterly inconvenient for everybody involved, why not just boycott and restrict and just economic clampdown sanctions on everybody who's not behaving and threatening war and firing rockets into Israel or treating their own people like crap like North Korea and Cuba? Why not just economically force them to either be better or fail and go away? Because an economic clampdown is more effective than any war in the long run, or at the very least, it's it's cheaper. I mean, if we just decided to just carpet bomb Cuba, get rid of everything, every government building and every military installation, and then we just show up and say, hi, you're the 51st state. First of all, I think Guam would be pretty mad. And secondly, we absolutely could do it. But economic sanctions were supposed to be faster and easier because within a year they should have been like, okay, everything's collapsing, fine, we'll, we'll kick out the commies. But the commies were like, no, we like power, and then, well, you know what, since the 50s? I don't even know, when did they go communist? Well, they all just went, yeah, we don't care about our people or economics or people starving or lack of resources. Uh, we care about power because we like being in charge. Yep, that's uh, dictatorships where your, your friends and family take over when you die and it just keeps going. You need someone less stubborn to be in office. But any other place run by anything that resembles a representative democracy or democracy or republic, oh, they're going to get rid of them, vote them out so quick. If they're like, no, we're going to keep doing it our way. We don't care if we can't trade with anyone. And then every business comes together like, well, we care. So change how you're doing things or get out. Yeah, those governments don't stay in power very long, do they? But gun-grabbing communist dictatorships where they take all the money, all the power, all the resources and all the guns, there is almost literally nothing you can do at that point if you're the people. And that's why economic sanctions didn't work. Now, on Russia, will it work? Absolutely. They're not a communist dictatorship. They're not run by one person with an iron fist who has, like, a son as backup in case they die. Okay, it's not North Korea. It's not Cuba. There ain't no Raul Castro, okay? The people really running Russia are business owners, whether it be an illegal business or a legitimate one, okay? The oil companies are like, okay, this is affecting our bottom line. Maybe we don't need Ukraine. Puppet dictator, get out of here. So that's why, in this case, I think it is proper that that's what the whole world is doing so everybody's like oh they're they're just grandstanding they're just virtue signaling when they say we're going to ban russia they're just followers they're just sheep they don't really mean it it's not going to do anything well when microsoft does it it's going to do something you kind of need microsoft operating systems to run a country okay you could switch over to like linux in like 10 years and just have everybody pissed off and be just as angry with linux as they are with microsoft os's which are almost equally awful but at least people know them and at least there's widespread support with all software and hardware but you can't do it overnight, and Microsoft just flipped the switch overnight. So you've probably heard of the unbelievably stupid story of people banning Russian-bred cats and Russian competitors from a cat... Was it a, a cat? Not fashion show. That's not the right term. I don't know. Some dumb cat show. Who gives a crap? That probably affects like 10 people in Russia. <laughs> that is idiotic grandstanding nonsense, but it does send a message. It does tell them, hey everybody top to bottom is against you and everybody's banning you. No matter where you turn, you're going to get blocked. You want to go sing in Eurovision or whatever? No, blocked. You want to have your cat in a cat competition? No, blocked. Everything is collapsing. You're banned from everything. That does put the most pressure either like mentally and just like in the backs of people's minds or actively in the case of giant corporations. I mean, even just Facebook, like right now, Facebook marketplace or Facebook shut down or banned America. I can't imagine they would do that, but boy, I sell a lot of stuff on marketplace. And if eBay, if they coordinate with eBay, oh, that would ruin one of my entire businesses right here. I do a lot of resale. Like we're talking upwards of like 10 K per year. It's a nice supplement when YouTube's low like this year. Now, luckily I have backups. Okay. I know of other video sites. I know of some good alt tech sites, okay? They might not pay the most, but then I could just, you know, up the e-bagging, up the support me. I just give me a dollar a month if, you know, 1% of you do it, which, yeah, actually I'd make more than I do right now if 1% of my viewers on all my YouTube channels gave me a dollar a month. But unfortunately, I'm subscribed to 302 channels, so let's just say I'm not going to do it. But YouTube aside, um, I could sell on Poshmark. I could sell on, I don't know, Virage, that's a thing, I think. I don't know. I've got a, a whole list of like, eh, in case eBay bans me and my account gets deleted by accident because they are that incompetent. Competent, or they go full SGW and just ban all the white people or males. I wouldn't put it past them. Their CEO and board and most of the management positions are complete SJW nutcases. Well, then I've got fallbacks. But boy, day one, would it be a disruption? It would be bad for me. Now, imagine there's nothing. Like, they're just, you're some random country out there, kind of like Russia, we'll say smaller, you know, just whatever. You know, second world, kind of first world, halfway in between, depends where you go. And you're like, yeah, we'll just use Craigslist because it's like mostly free and it's what everybody uses. And then the whole country just uses one thing that's controlled by a foreign entity. And then the rug gets pulled out from under you. 
Well, now what do you have? Oh, maybe somebody will just program their own Craigslist, which, terrible example. I think I could write up Craigslist in about five seconds. That site is not very complicated. But my own operating system to replace, you know, Microsoft, my own computer manufacturer, my own chip manufacturer, my own car manufacturer, what are they going to do in Russia if every major car manufacturer says no? You know how many cars are made in Russia? Not a high percentage. It's probably higher than you think, but not enough. If you take away 10, 20% of the car supply to a country, it is over. I mean, like, and you want to talk trucks? I mean, if Volvo boycotts them, oh boy. If they can't buy Cummings engines, oh my gosh. Even just trailers? I mean, who knows where the trailers come from? Maybe China, like I said. That is the thing propping them up, and that's what pisses me off the most. They can get steel, they can get metal, they can get electronics from China. That's most of what you need, how they can get food from China. But boy, are they feeling the squeeze, so... Man, if you start taking, you know, public opinion polls and you find out suddenly overnight 91% of the civilians are against you, your military, your actions, and your government, that is like flashing red danger. Now you're either like, I don't care, I'm Raul Castro. We've got the guns and we've got all the positions and 90% of the stuff we make in our country goes to just us, uh, us management, us, us upper management communist people, and none of it goes to the workers. You know, like communism is supposed to be designed. I don't care what their opinions are. In fact, round up the people who voted that way. Send them to the camps. We'll re-educate them or get rid of them. But in Russia, it don't work that way. That's why this is this is generally a positive thing and it does work. So if anybody's against them, you can be against stupid corporate grandstanding where you're like, what, do you even sell in Russia? This is such a nothing, just bandwagon. Ooh, I'm doing it too, guys. I'm so great. Yeah, you probably should call that out, but still, at the end of the day, it gets results and it works. Now, here's the bad thing. Who were the first people to turn their backs on Russia? I think even before the war. Stripe. They knew it was coming, and they started setting up their own thing with China, a Stripe alternative, which is like the big international banking, every business sends money to each other international thing. And then you've got the, what is it, the World Economic Fund or whatever, they basically control Stripe. I know that you're going to say, well, that's not true. Well, isn't it though? And then you've got like, you know, the major international bank brands and you've got like, you know, even just like PayPal. I mean, I wouldn't call them a large international bank, but then you've got all the crypto exchanges who have so far said, we're not banning Russia. Screw you. We're not going to listen to the World Economic Fund. We're literally a decentralized, like it's the whole point of crypto. But anybody else, it's like, well, should they be able to just get their way? What, what if instead of, oh, well, Russia went to war and tried to invade a country. Okay, everybody in the world agrees that shouldn't have happened. Cool, we're all on the same page. But what about next time? What about, you know what? We think that the, the next leader of Germany shouldn't be a white person. That It's been too many white people. So us woke idiots over at the World Economic This and That and everybody who talks to each other and Facebook, we all know they're a bunch of SJWs, Microsoft, Apple, they all get together and like, you know what, let's start applying pressure to this country because we don't like what leader and their skin color. We don't like their gender. Oh, it's about time they had a LGBTQ plus leader and 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 they didn't. So we're, we're just, we're going to block them. You know, 1% of our, our sales are in Germany. It's not even going to affect us. We're going to put pressure on them and say, no, we, as the international community of everybody who runs all finance and tech, we decided we don't like your leader, replace them. And then just economic sanctions across the board. Should they have that power and influence? I go back to yes, if they're using it to go after the bad guys and no, if they're a bunch of lefty lunatics. And remember, they were talking about even 10 years ago, this great reset. They're going to reset the world economy. It's all going to be green and it's going to be, that was a lie too, by the way, if that actually sounds good, yes, it would be good if we rolled out all green tech, but that's, that was just the absolute smoke screen. They are so full of crap. Half the people running this are like oil and natural gas companies. Come on. But they all want to reset it to communism. The whole, you've probably heard the saying at this point, you'll uh, own nothing and be happy. Look, if they think we're post-scarcity, everybody has enough to go around, everybody can be rich. Um, no. That's actually less true than 10 years ago and less true than the 10 years before that and less true than the 10 years before that because we're running out of oil and everything and farming land and food and yeah, we're running out of water. We're running out of everything, okay? The, we aren't Star Trek replicator post-scarcity. Oh, you want to be a, a, an artist? Sure, cool. Oh, you want to just have a government-assigned international world government apartment and then just make whatever you want and do whatever you want? Work if you want to or don't if you don't? Yeah, that would be wonderful, if we had unlimited everything. And honestly, no joke, I think if we got fusion reactors, like 50 of them in the world, we would have unlimited energy. You could use that unlimited energy to power batteries and power the mining machines that go get the lithium and just everything would be like free, just unlimited from seawater. You just go get uh, deuterium and tritium, which is hydrogen with an extra neutron. You fuse it together, it spits out a mountain of energy, you use the energy to go get more hydrogen. It is literally an infinite, until we run out of hydrogen, which will never happen, fuel source. 
unlimited energy. Every, every car, every boat, every plane, everything runs on free energy that doesn't involve oil. Then we'd be in post-scarcity. You don't own anything. You don't need to run a business. Everybody has enough to go around. All the robots do the farming. If you want to be an artist, be an artist. Cool. You just get free unlimited food and everything and lodging and clothing from the government or from just whatever. It would work. If we were in a post-scarcity world, we're, we're in an even worse scarcity world than we were 10 years ago, like I just said. So while the idea might seem good on the surface and you're like, well, yeah, what if we just took everything everybody had and spread it out? It, it wouldn't actually work. And you might say, oh, but this person owns $120 billion. What if we took that and split it by everybody in America? But see, that's not how it works. Just because you have more money doesn't mean there's enough corn and sugar and everything else to go around. You can't just, oh, I have money. I'm waving my new money that I just got in the air magically, oh, now we're growing twice of everything and everybody can overconsume and be comfortable and live middle class. It, that can't happen. We don't have the energy. We don't have the resources. We don't have the food. We don't have the water. We don't have the oil. We don't have anything right now to do that. So what it is, is a smoke screen to say, hey, this World Economic Forum, Great Reset, roll out socialism everywhere crap. What they want is the rich people think that they deserve to be rich and they want a worker class under them and they're going to lie to them just like communism and socialism and say, we'll spread everything. Everybody will own the tractor. Everybody will get every profit from every business. And then as soon as they're like, wow, this is great, and they roll it out, all the people in charge just take all the resources and money and the people under them have nothing. That's what they're trying to roll out right now. So with that in mind, does it seem like a good idea to let all these giant multinational banks and world economic forums, or I think I called it fund, <laughs> whoever these people are, giant tech companies that run, you know, 90% of computers on the planet to let them all push around everybody and do whatever they want and, and control entire uh, countries' economies. It, does that seem like a good idea now? No, but it's only because of their goals. Like I said, even dictatorships can work as long as the dictator is like, my job as king of this province of England in the 12th century is to be the best possible leader for my people and, you know, prosperity and jobs and money for everyone. I am here to serve the people. Well, yeah, then emperors and monarchs and everything, you know, dictatorships, they work great. If the World Economic Forum was like, um, let, let's use all of our power and influence to just punish anybody behaving badly and everything else is for, for the good of humanity, well, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. So in this case, all the big multinationals, all the biggest corporations all coming down and attacking Russia, it works because Russia's awful, because they're targeting someone that we don't like that's behaving badly. As soon as they start targeting people that they just disagree with, when they start you know, targeting pro-freedom people who think differently than them, now we've got a big problem and how do we solve it? So I don't like the amount of power that they've flexed in this uh, particular instance, but the sanctions against Russia are good. So the people behind it and, and conspiring to do it are bad, obviously. The amount of power they have is bad, but every single sanction against Russia right now is good and moving in a good, peaceful direction that prevents more war and absolute all-out World War III and nuclear holocaust. So something can be simultaneously good and bad, you just kind of got to get both sides of it. So that's why I wanted to make this video, because so many people, whether they be like far left or some colored pill or some independent thinker or some highly informed person or some random 12 year old who just took a civics class. Every single group seems to be having a bad take. And unfortunately, a lot of people, especially in America are resorting to, well, what does my team say? It, it's us versus them. So what, what is, what is my team's thing so that I can just parrot it and don't have to think for myself. That's why I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm pretty hyper conservative, but I am on absolutely nobody's side. And I really don't care for the Republicans either. I'm on team open a Bible and do what it says, okay? Quite simply, that's 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 my my moral and social and economic and governance guidelines right there. Not, ooh, Republicans are good because Dems are bad. Bush was awful. I don't know if you noticed that or not. So honestly, it, there's been a lot of like, let's push Facebook off a cliff lately, and, and it worked, and they're they're helping push. It's hilarious. There's been a lot of let's replace Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft tried to stomp out LibreOffice. They sued the crap out of them. Bunch of people who were like from the Free Software Foundation, which has now gone totally left. I hate them, but at the time, whatever. They funded the money with international donations, fought them in court and won. And now we get a free office suite that looks an awful lot like, uh, you know, Word and Excel and works perfectly with it. They call it alt tech because it, it's, it sounds like alt right. That's why the left named it that. But you know what? I'll embrace it. We're taking it back, guys. We're taking it back. So yeah, alt tech, I mean, YouTube has been cracking down on certain things while promoting like crazy Islamic terrorists and anti-Jewish sentiment and all that while being like, oh, you said something about gay people. Haha, <laughs> delete. Banned. I mean, Twitch, they're just anti-men. They hate men. Nothing more to say there. And they think they have all the power. Well, 
Really big, really rich entities and just groups of people who are just pissed off have started all kinds of alt tech stuff. So anytime you see something that is an alternative, support it if it's not secretly run by an absolute lunatic. Now, let me let me give you an example. Discord, which is like the main chat app to like end all chat apps, even though it's designed like crap by morons and they just ripped off and stole Chrome's code. Well, they said, you know, we're, we're going to crack down on any kind of really any conservatives, any, you know, and then they let a bunch of pervs and weirdos go and all that. So people are like, I'm going to move to Gilded. Somebody just made a new, basically better than Discord platform called Gilded. It's owned and run by Roblox. If I were to just give my personal summary of Roblox, they are pro-child abuse, pro-child gambling, manipulative, and pro-pedophile. And their entire management staff is lefty SJW brainwashed, absolute, so far gone, they don't even know how to operate in society, morons and lunatics. Just mentally unstable, white-hating, man-hating, religion-hating, crazy people. They went full as left as you can possibly go. And Roblox is a terrible platform that you should never, ever let your children with or, uh, near because... It's all manipulative pro gambling scams and just horrible platforms run by horrible people and they refuse to do anything about child abusers because a whole bunch of their staff have been already outed as child abusers. So you know what? Instead of just, oh, Discord bad, I'm going to this one because somebody told me to. No, I'm not moving to Gilded either. Sorry. But uh, a group I know, I'm not even going to mention the name, uh, they are working on a decentralized messaging app where it just kind of runs itself, kind of like the Bitcoin network where there are no servers to download from. You're all downloading from each other in a network and then everything's encrypted. Um, I think that's kind of what Signal was supposed to be, but then I think that was found to have a backdoor or weakness or something. But they're making a truly like uncontrollable peer-to-peer -peer one. And the technology is there. You can't say, well, nothing will get out from under the government. Um, All of crypto? So there's that. The network just runs itself. That's why you need these systems that just run themselves or are run by a group of people. Which really, it's, it's not it runs itself. Really, the, the crypto networks are also run by random groups of individuals and nobody has governance and everything's by voting. You want to make a change, you vote with your node, you vote with your pool, you vote with your software client. Everyone's equal, everyone gets a vote. That's how basically like at least the Bitcoin network works and most other ones. There's no central authority and the people participating in it run it and then once it launches, it's hands off. Good luck stopping that, governments. So anytime you see some hands off, it runs itself, open source, not run by somebody with a, a an agenda, get on it. I don't care what it takes. It, it, just tell people, your whole friends and family, Facebook's awful, I'm moving here, it's better, here's why, come follow me or don't. Want to keep up with my life? You want to see, you know, what I'm selling, whatever. I'm still on Facebook Marketplace, but I use a fake name. Yeah, I'm moving to this one. I'm moving to, you know, whatever, so-and-so website. But before you make such a drastic life change, make sure it's not run by crazy people or completely inadequate, inept coders like the new Trump one or a fake conservative like the new Trump one or a bunch of yay, freedom for everyone, hipster, really just socialist activist programmers like anybody from the FSF, Free Software Foundation. They've been completely taken over by those types. I would not trust anything the endorser roll out. So if people slowly move to just, I'm going to run it myself, I'm going to take all the money away from Facebook and kill them. If you say they're too big to fail, you obviously have not heard of MySpace. And I actually think it's ironic that then you haven't heard of MySpace because they were too big to fail and you haven't even heard of them. And if you have heard of them, you know what happened to them. You can topple them. Facebook lost like $200 billion in like one day when they missed their... Um, I don't know, growth numbers, and they started to shrink. People are like, oh, Facebook's shrinking? Oh, I'm going to put my money elsewhere. Oh, that's right, I hate Facebook, and they've done nothing but get hacked, leak information, and get government sanctions. Like That's like all they've done. Every product they've rolled out has been crap. They, they, If you have money in Facebook, you're an idiot right now. And a lot of people realize that, sold their stock in like, I don't know, 30% was it? 50% of their company's value just gone overnight? Yeah, things move that quick. If you think there's no stopping Google, there's no stopping Facebook. Yeah, have you seen DuckDuckGo's growth numbers? Google is in trouble and a lot of the products they rolled out lately are crap because they think, well, like Stadia, that was a nightmare. That was a terrible product built by people who didn't know what they were doing and a terrible concept from the beginning. But they're like, we're Google and everything we do succeeds because we're a monopoly. And then they forget that the product has to actually be good. Google Glass, that was the worst idea ever. Should have never left the drawing board. In fact, whoever put it on the drawing board should have been fired. It turns out people don't want stealthy cameras that record everything out in public and in movie theaters and literally anywhere. 
That failed. They gave up on that. Microsoft's stupid HoloLens, that thing basically died. Microsoft's metaverse, where you're all going to meet and glorified clone of Second Life and talk to each other in a glorified clone of VR chat. That failed because people are like, but it's Facebook. You're just going to try to control our lives, influence us, censor our speech. Like they've, they have already lost their reputation and the normal average person is fed up with it if they know the truth about it, if they have sufficient information and know what they're doing. And that's where the liberal control of the media is the number one problem. But how many people on YouTube do you watch that just tell you the news? Either they're in the middle, unbiased, or they're conservative and they tell the truth. Yeah, look at CNN's numbers right now. Look at MSNBC's income numbers and viewership. I think my main YouTube channel has more views than their cable network. Last time I checked, I had 240 million watch minutes. That is lifetime, but still, I, th I think I beat the Super Bowl. I'm just some guy. I think between all my channels, I have like 100K subs, not even. Well, guess what? It's 2022. Some guy with a microphone and a webcam, or <laughs> not, can just jump on and tell you the news. You can be like, oh, I, I like that this person tells the truth. I like that they're saying different things. And so I looked who was true between CNN and this guy. And, uh, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to listen to this person from now on. You know what the World Economic, whatever the F stands for, uh, thinks of, of crypto that they can't control? They hate it because the people run it. But all this stuff is invading their territory and can just knock them all over, which, uh, yeah, can't wait to see it. And we're seeing it right now. Look at all the big tech companies. It's nothing but bad news. I mean, even just like the auto companies, Tesla comes in and just says, hey, we're doing whatever we want. We're, we're going to you know, do this, do that. We're going to find, we'll move, we'll do this, we'll operate this way, we'll change the laws. And now they all had to change their ways and keep up with the electric vehicles and not all just have this gentlemanly agreement to keep running on gasoline and price fix. And yeah, really auto sales in America were pretty corrupt. More of an 80s, 90s thing. A lot of, you know, Toyota came in and they're like, oh, now there's just too much competition. Okay, now it's every man for itself. But it was pretty corrupt, at least in the past. And it was a glorified, like, oligopoly, I guess. It's not really a monopoly because it's like a bunch of companies. But they all work together to fix prices and bribe the EPA and lie about emissions and everything else they did. And they were broken up by, like, one dude from South Africa and a bunch of people that supported them. There you go. And it can happen that fast. So if you ever feel like, oh, man, nothing will ever stop the media... Well, random people with webcams. Nobody will ever stop the big, you know, auto manufacturers and their friends, the oil company. Oh, Elon Musk, whoops. Oops, Toyota making a Prius, oops. Well, nobody will ever unseat Facebook. Everybody hates them and they're on the verge of failure. In fact, no, people said nobody will ever replace Craigslist, but it was so poorly coded, people just moved to Facebook. It can happen that quick, and when you see something, you need to get on the trend to support it, because it needs the initial push, and then once it kind of starts the boulder rolling down the hill, then everybody just goes. I mean, MySpace failed in like a year. Once 5 or 10% of people got off of MySpace and went on Facebook, that was it. So embrace alt tech, buy local, I mean... Anything you could do to punish China economically, Russia, any kind of sanctions, anything you could do that screws with all these multinational corporations all run by lefties, whatever you can personally do that doesn't inconvenience or completely ruin your economics, your life, or your budget, what what, what you can do within reason, and the more money and more power and influence you got, the, this more applies to you because you got more flexibility there, just a reminder, the quicker we can move away from these people who shouldn't be in power, either corporately or government, and that, of course, obviously translates to also get out and vote. And spread the word about what politicians you think should be in office, local all the way up to the top. Like, don't be shy about that. Don't be afraid to talk about it. So even with the, kind of the dual topic and a full world history lesson, this is still shorter than the usual one-hour target for my podcast on this channel. But, uh, well, you know what? That just gives you more time to um, go watch my other content. <laughs> Not much of it is like this. Not much of it is just like history, government news, and politics, but uh, some of it is. Otherwise, I mean, hey, this is like the prepper channel. Come on, like cover your butt. Get, get your resources ready in case war breaks out or a weather event or a corporate crackdown. You know, the more resilient you are and the more everybody's just like, well, <laughs> I've got food. I've got money in the bank. I've got money outside the banks. <laughs> Look what Canada did with the bank lockdowns. Well, then you're immune to these evil forces influences. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll leave it there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.